welcome to my youtube channel the management room in this video we are looking at planning planning is the first management function what is planning planning is a process of establishing goals and suitable courses of action for achieving those goals it involves defining the organization's goals establishing an overall strategy for achieving those goals and developing a comprehensive set of plans to integrate and coordinate organizational work. Planning can either be formal or informal. Informal planning is often done in many small businesses where the owner manager has a vision of where he or she wants the business to go and how to get there. Informal planning is general and lacks continuity. Although it is more common in smaller organizations, Informal planning exists in some large organizations as well, and some small businesses have very sophisticated planning processes and formal planning. Let's look at formal planning. Specific goals covering a period of years are defined. These goals are written down and shared with organizational members. In formal planning, specific action programs exist for the achievement of these goals. That is, managers clearly define the path they want to take to, to get the organization and the, the various work units from where they are to where they want them to be. So in formal planning, these goals are specific goals covering a period of years. Then these goals are written down and shared with organizational members. So in formal planning, specific action programs exist for the achievement of these goals. That is, managers clearly define the path they want to take to get the organization and the various work units from where they are to where they want them to be. Now let us look at the role of goals and plans in planning. So when we talk about goals, we are looking at objectives. And we say that goals are desired outcomes for individuals, groups, and entire organizations. Goals are objectives, and we use the two terms interchangeably. They provide the direction for all management decisions and form the criterion against which actual work accomplishments can be measured. That is why they are often called the foundation of planning. If you don't know what that desired target or outcome is, how then are you going to establish your plans so plans are documents that outline how goals are going to be met and that typically describe resource allocations schedules and other necessary actions to accomplish the goals as managers plan they are developing both goals and plans let's look at the importance of goals goals are important for at least four reasons Goals provide a sense of direction. Without a goal, individuals and organizations tend to, tend to muddle along, reacting to environmental changes without a clear sense of what they really want to achieve. By setting goals, people and organizations bolster their motivation and gain a source of inspiration that helps them overcome the inevitable obstacles they encounter. Goals focus our efforts. Every person and every organization has limited resources, which can be used to achieve a variety of goals. By selecting just one or a set of related goals, we make a commitment about the way we will use our scarce resources and we begin to set priorities. Third, goals guide our plans and decisions. So our short-term or long-term plans helps us to make key decisions. Finally, goals help us evaluate our progress. A clearly stated measurable goal, goal with a specific deadline easily becomes a standard of performance. That lets individuals and managers alike evaluate their progress. Thus, goals are an essential part of controlling the processing of being sure that actions are in keeping with goals and the plans created to achieve them. If we find we are straying off course or if we encounter unforeseen contingencies, 
we can take corrective action by modifying our plan why do managers plan managers face a, a lot of situation in this dynamic environment which has a great impact on an organization's survival and this cannot be left to chance accordingly contemporary managers must plan and plan effectively setting goals establishing strategies to achieve those goals and developing a set of plans to integrate and coordinate activities seem complicated given that fact why should managers plan what impact does planning have on performance we look at we want to identify reasons for planning one we say planning gives direction it helps managers know how they are to organize people and resources and have a clear idea of what they need to do and how to achieve it secondly it ensures that managers can lead with confidence or expect others to follow them thirdly it ensures attainment of goals and plans set by the organization and reduces the risk of failure since challenges and problems can be anticipated at the planning stage and corrective measures developed fourthly it reduces the impact of change since organizational plans and programs are implemented effectively and any deviations or changes are corrected timely to ensure focus and attainment of organizational plans and programs. Fifth, planning sets the standards used in controlling. Controlling becomes an exercise in futility since faulty plans affect the health of the entire organization. Sixth, there is effective coordination between various departments and individuals and they will work in unison and cohesion thus preventing the organization from working at cross purposes seven planning also reduces uncertainty by forcing managers to look ahead anticipate change consider the impact of change and develop appropriate responses and finally it also clarifies the consequences of actions managers might take in response to change even though planning can't eliminate change managers plan in order to anticipate changes and develop the most effective responses to them so we ask how do managers plan planning is often called the primary management function because it establishes the basis for all the other functions that managers perform without planning managers would not know what to organize lead or control in fact without plans there wouldn't be anything to organize lead or control so how do managers plan that is what we want to look at in the next session we look at types of plans so managers at all levels create plans to guide their subunits towards goals that will contribute to the organization's larger goals. The most popular way to describe organizational plans are by their one, breadth. So example, we say that strategic versus tactical or operational plans. Secondly, by time frame, then we look at long term versus short term. Thirdly, specificity. We look at directional versus specific plans and fourthly frequency of use so then we look at single use plans versus standing plans now what are strategic plans strategic plans are long-term directional and single use plans whilst tactical operational plans are short-term specific and standing plans organizations use two main plans strategic plans and operational plans strategic plans are designed by top and middle managers to meet the organization's broad goals they are plans that apply to the entire organization establish the organization's overall goals 
and seek to position the organization in terms of its environment. Strategic plans tend to cover a, long, a longer time frame. They also cover a broader view of the organization. Strategic plans affect a wide range of organizational activities, are broad and simple. Let's look at tactical operational plans. There are plans that specify the details of how the overall goals are to be achieved and reflect how strategic plans will be implemented in day-to-day -day activities. Tactical operational plans define ways to achieve the goals. Also, operational plans tend to cover short time periods such as monthly, weekly, and day-to-day. The difference in years between short-term and long-term plans have shortened considerably. It used to be that long-term meant anything over seven years. As organizational environments have become more uncertain, the definition of long-term has changed. So we are going to look at long-term plans as those plans with a time frame beyond three years. Short-term plans are those covering one year or less. These time classifications are fairly common. However, an organization can designate any time frame it wants to use for planning purposes. Intuitively, it will seem that specific plans will be preferable to directional or loosely guided plans. Let's look at specific plans. Specific plans are clearly defined and leave no room for interpretation. They have specifically stated objectives. There is no ambiguity and no problem with misunderstandings. For example, a manager who seeks to increase his or a unit out, output by 8% over a given 12-month period might establish specific procedures, budget allocations, and schedules of activities to reach that goal. The drawbacks of specific plans are that they require clarity and a sense of predictability that often do not exist. When uncertainty is high, a management must be flexible in order to respond to unexpected changes, directional plans are preferable. Directional plans are flexible plans that set out general guidelines. They provide focus but do not lock managers into specific goals or courses of action. Example, instead of detailing a specific plan to cut costs by 4% and increase revenues by 6% in the next six months, managers might formulate a directional plan for improving profits by 5-10% to over the next six months. The flexibility inherent in directional plans must be weighed against the costs or the loss of clarity provided by specific plans. Some plans that managers develop are ongoing, whilst others are used only once. Single use plan is a one time plan, a detailed course of action used once or only occasionally to solve a problem that does not occur repeatedly. It is specifically designed to meet the needs of a unique situation example programs projects and budgets standing plans is an established set of decisions used by managers to deal with recurring organizational activities it provides guidance for activities performed repeatedly standing plans include policies rules and procedures so an example is a disciplinary policy this is a standing plan let us look at the planning process. The planning process. The overall planning process prevents managers from thinking merely in terms of day-to-day -day activities. The process begins when managers develop the overall plan for their organization by clearly defining mission and strategic level goals. Secondly, they translate the plan into action, which includes defining tactical plans and objectives developing a strategy to align those goals, formulating contingency and scenario plans, and identifying intelligent 
teams to analyze major competitive issues. Thirdly, managers lay out the operational factors needed to achieve goals. This involves devising operational goals and plans, selecting the measure and targets that will be used to determine whether things are on track, and identifying stretch goals and crisis plans that might have to be put into action. Fourthly, managers execute the plan by using tools such as single-use plans and decentralized responsibility. Finally, managers periodically review plans to learn from re results and shift plans as needed, thus starting a new planning cycle. Thank you very much for tuning in to my YouTube channel. Hit the notification tab and you will be made aware of new videos. Thank you.